Because I'm thinking about the builders of that building in uh, Florida. Sure. Now, maybe they would take a hit now uh, if we knew who they were. Uh, maybe they're still in business. But it also suggests that the way that corporations, that corporations, which we know, and you've made it clear, Sam. are just, wait a second, are just people who have a legal protection. Those people, 10 years down the road, they're gone. That boy, that CEO and, sure, those, and that's, that C-suite, that's they're gone and they've profited from it. So if the company goes bankrupt because they, I mean, the Sacklers made billions. Yeah, they don't I have them. Any, they don't have those billions anymore. Oh, they, they do. Might, they no, they don't. They don't. Do. They don't. And they, they and, they, and they're going to, and they, they, they were they pretty well off much even before this. I literally look, just interviewed the, uh, the guy who did the story on the Sacklers. They very much do have billions of dollars. But again, I, you know, I don't think they are, they are the only party responsible for what happened there. And a lot of people are getting off the hook on it. But, you know, I, then everybody gets off the hook. Like, no, the point is, you know, there's life, no, life, there's no guarantee in life. Look, you, we have the system you want or close to it. And uh, a building inspector went into that building and returned every 10 years. The government sent a building inspector into the building in Miami and they still didn't get it. They still blew it up. No, and I private, would argue the private, the private owners of that building did not yeah, respond but that's to the it. Point. The point is this, that in a, in, a, in a world in which the government doesn't have a building inspector, let, let me finish this thought. And then I have to run, unfortunately, right? Because I don't have a lot of time. Okay. Let me finish this thought. In a world in which I imagine, there are many people that have a clear interest in keeping the building from collapsing. Certainly the owners of the building and the people who live there. Now, look, mistakes are going to happen in any system. Mistakes are going to happen, right? I, no system is going to guarantee that no buildings ever collapse. No system is going to guarantee that no people ever get sick from a drug or sick from food that they eat. But I like the incentives of the building owners, the people who own the condos, more than I like the incentive of the building inspector from the government. <laughs> now, it didn't Surfside, work in this case. Man. It not didn't work Surfside, in this case, but I said that sometimes some, sometimes things are not going to work. But you know what? I also like the incentive of in a free market, not in the world in which we live now where everybody hides behind the government, uh, of the insurance company that insured that building. Because um, they've got a lot of claims that they're going to have to pay now, and they're going to take a big hit. They, in a free market, they would have sent an inspector. Now, in the world we live in today, they don't because they were on the government inspector, which probably was not a good idea. No, the, the government, government inspector made well. it quite clear that there were problems there. The not, private inspector, not I'm sorry, you're wrong. years ago when you're the wrong. building was you're built wrong. with a base. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Right? The private inspectors also, the engineering company that was in there, the private owners of that building made the decision not to fix it. Now, were there stricter government uh, regulations? Then, who's then, then why are we worried about it? Then they made a decision and they suffered the consequences. Because there's a hundred, uh, there's a hundred- People, people who made a decision, people. who made a bad decision and suffered the consequences of it. I'm not justifying the building collapsing. I'm saying that people make decisions. If I make a decision to walk into the street without walk, looking, uh, should the driver, uh, be be limited in his capacity to drive because I made a stupid decision. The point is that there are. Just want to pause right there to say that, yes, in fact, the way that traffic laws exist right now, uh, the uh, drivers are still required to stop for you, even if uh, even if you're jaywalking. I, I remember uh, uh, <laughs> my. Uh, I remember actually my driver's ed teacher a million years ago. Uh, somebody asked him in the, in the class uh, how you know if if you pedestrians have right of way even if they're jaywalking, and he said yes, we do not have the death penalty for jaywalking. <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> great teacher, great teacher. That's funny. That's a good gag. That's a good teaching right there. And you still remember it. That's how. No, it, that's, that's true. How, that was 1996. That's still in my memory. So there you go. Uh, that's, that's a great gag. 25 year old gag. Yeah, that's, you know, 25. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which, so it's like, yes, even if, uh, even if somebody, uh, even if somebody, uh, somebody jaywalks, you do still have to stop for them. Uh, if you, uh, if you possibly can. Uh, and not to, uh, not to mention, of course, that if you, uh, if somebody's, jaywalking or just at an intersection but they didn't stop to look both ways and you can't stop because you're driving way 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 too fast then you're also legally responsible for that 
Uh, like just, you know, like this idea that everybody should be, I mean, whatever, we'll play it out when there are only a few minutes left, but uh, the idea that uh, everybody should, um, that everybody should be worried that you just can't like, that people don't have a right to just take it as a given that any building that's available for rent meets some minimum safety standards that like, yeah. That, no, it's no, no. Yeah, that you. It's not, yeah, it's not a foolish decision to get a condo. That's not walking in front of traffic. You're on. That's, that's no, different. it's not because because uh, because in any functional society, uh, the uh, that that's not on the renter to make sure that the condo isn't going to collapse because they're ignoring basic safety standards. I mean, that's like, you know, that's like saying it's like the old like thing about the. Um, I mean, I know it's an urban legend, but like the uh, the thing about like uh, you know that 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 old urban legend about you know people would like stick razors and you know in apples or whatever in Halloween, you know that's like that's like yeah. Uh, let's say somebody actually did do that, like you eating that apple. That's not a reckless decision, right? That like got yes. your, your you will you eat the your honor. Your Honor, those kids ate those apples. They could have run them through a metal detector or a magnet or put some iron filings to see if a magnetic field was – you know, they – Your Honor, at best, I share the blame <laughs> at most. That's kind of incredible, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a lot here. We could run it all down at the end, but this is pretty uh, – there's a reason. There's a reason why so much of law runs on a reasonable expectation. Like you have a reasonable expectation, yeah, that that house – that. The, the building that the the condo management or you know, condo association is ignoring the advice of the building code inspector. Like that's what I love too. Like in this story, the building inspectors are like, "Wow, this building is at risk of falling down," and the condo people are like, "No, nah, we'll get around to it," and they drag their feet, and eventually it fell down. And then the story, you're on, still blaming him. And I was like, "Why do I have the idea you'd blame him?" Also, if he said, "No, this building's fine; it can't fall down." Like the the public inspector did his part, and he's still to blame here. That's why I always like is these moments where, okay, you're making me think that there's no course of action here that you would see as justified publicly. Yeah. And and by the way, I just, just to be clear on this, yes, we need tougher enforcement of building regulation. That's the point. What we have right now is inadequate. But if you're talking about regulations versus no regulations, the fact that this is a big news story is yeah, relevant. They mostly don't fall down. They mostly <laughs> don't fall down. Because they're up to because their people don't drag their feet as badly on inspection. There is stuff to say about this, but yeah. this is right. I love this image here right now too. This is good. Yeah. All right, let's watch the last five minutes of the debate. You, you know what you want, want is for the people who make the decision to suffer to benefit from the consequence of their actions. If I make a decision to take oxycotton, knowing it's addictive and I become addictive from it, that's my problem, not yours and not mine, and, and not anybody else's. I, I believe got, people should pay for the mistakes that they make. I, I, I think that we have gotten to the, the, the rub between us. That for you, uh, the morality, as far as I can tell, um, is that consequences, if they are, can be directly attributed to a mistake that individuals make, are just, that's just the way it is. For me, my morality, I guess, to, the, to use it, your term, is that society should try and diminish and mitigate the suffering of other people. Uh, yeah, that's a big and, difference between us. My view is if you want to mitigate the suffering of other people, you should be able to do that freely. Uh, to force me to help you mitigate the suffering of other people because it's your value, but if it's not mine, that is immoral. It's immoral for you to impose your morality on me, even if you're in the majority. I, I have to say, too, that every, well, not every, but many of the conversations I've had with libertarians, the, 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 the ones who are, are, are more coherent, and I count you as one of those, ultimately comes down to there's a certain frustration that they have mm -hmm. that the vast majority of Americans um, subscribe to the idea that society should mitigate uh, mistakes that people make, you know, like things like, and, and that uh, society should be designed that way. And that it is frustrating for people like you to live in a country where most people the, uh, feel that way. Oh, absolutely. We try to educate people not to feel that way, but, but yes, I would like to live in a place where people are free 
to aggregate their efforts together to mitigate problems that they see fit on a voluntary basis. I don't believe in coercion. I just don't believe in force. I don't believe anybody has a right to force somebody else Except to do something. Except to protect they property. That is protect. I'm all for protection. I'm protecting your life. Police should protect your life. I don't, I think property is and an property. extension of your life. But life is property is part of your life. I mean, you can't separate well, well, the wait, two. Wait, wait, wait. If I need to produce stuff in order life. to live. What about government protecting your life if you um if the building falls? Like, because not every one of the 150 people who died in there made that decision. Sure. The children didn't. They were shareholders of a of a building and they were they had represented. Oh, the shareholders are owners and they're responsible for the decision making that they the decisions they make. But um it's to protect your life from somebody else using force against you. It's not from nature. I mean, a hurricane might blow through here. I, I'm, I, I'm in Puerto Rico right now. And, you know, the I, I don't expect the government to protect me from the hurricane. Um, I do expect the government from, to protect me from somebody trying to uh, you should. shoot me in the street. Did the government help uh, putting electricity back on there? Well, the Probably. government destroyed the electricity grid and then it rebuilt it in, in as bad of a shape as it was originally. So the next hurricane will go out again. Was that drug, incidentally, people are saying it was Vioxx. Is that the case? Vioxx, yes. Thank you. It was Vioxx. Yeah. My understanding is that was a, 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 a recall that they did uh, themselves. But it's uh, but maybe that's incorrect. No, it's the FDA forced them Vioxx to had been taken by some 4 million Americans out of those patients who took Vioxx. The arthritis drug may have caused approximately 140,000 heart attacks, resulting in an estimated 60,000 deaths. This is according to an FDA investigation. I mean, may have, may have caused, um, notice may, I mean, imagine if they did that with a vaccine, may have. And, uh, and also, um, why can't I make that decision? Why can't I make decision whether I, I mean, want to, I want to take the risk wrong. of heart attack and You're reduce- You're a much smarter guy than most people who have the ability to assess all no, these I, I don't, ass I don't assume that. I actually have a high opinion of most human beings and think that they can make decisions for themselves. And I think it's a- it's the, the philosopher kids, king kids, the own. philosopher king mentality of a of Plato, where they you get to decide for other people what's good for them. You're right. Do you have kids? I do. I have yeah. two boys. I mean, you know, when you have little kids, it's a little bit tough to be doing all that medical uh, reading, right? It's absolutely tough. It's absolutely yeah. tough. And 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 part of the reading is finding a good pediatrician so that you somebody you can trust who's not going to deceive you. And that's not easy. I'm not saying life's easy. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. No, it's not about fingers crossed. It's not about fingers crossed. But okay, well, I need. You know, I do need to run. I know. I appreciate, I appreciate it. I appreciate the Thank time and so I appreciate much. the stability. Thank that you. That was fun. Yeah, appreciate it was. Bye, bye. bye. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. I mean, I think uh, that was, I thought, incredibly uh, civil, and I think Yaron ultimately presented a a vision for life, uh, what it would be like. Bone up on your on your drug manufacturing, folks, and on your medical treatments. And Never bone mind. up on the buildings that you live in. You may not be made yeah, aware that there are structural issues. You may not know, but you should know. You should know, yeah, right? Sam, you were free to go check all those buildings in Miami to help those people on your own if you wanted to. Why are you trying to make Yaren or Yaren help you on? All right, there we go. That's the debate. That's great. It sounds like uh, Cedar staff were already, you know, they know what to do. So that's good to see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Lots of lots of great high points here. You know, <clears throat> I mean, arguably, uh, no, it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like a number of interesting themes. Uh, one thing I like is, is the use of property. Uh, always, of course, a big go to uh, on the right. And, you know, it's so important, like, you know, the left would agree, like there's a lot of bodies buried there. But remember, for these guys, there's never they can never like he says property is part of your life. Which, you know, yeah, well, I mean, I guess you, your personal things like you may have personal things you cherish from your family or something. But like it's he says you can't separate the two. And like, that's interesting because you can't. And really, you can, you can guys, take somebody's just, property without taking their life. I gave someone something once. So I see now it was as if I cut off my own hand when I gave my brother that uh, CD of No Doubt back in the 90s. Uh, I realized that I, that was a physical sacrifice I made. Like the thing is for these guys, of course, like the big thing here, just uh, to, to mention it once because it did, does come up so much, 
uh, is the distinction is between private and major private property, you know, personal and major private property, you know, your personal toothbrush and your personal little effects and your copies of books and your smartphone and so on and your clothes. Like these are things like that are personal property. Like everyone needs most of these things. They are just, they're pretty basic effects for most of us, unless you have one of those crazy world-class clothing collections or something or a collection of classic cars. These things can get big. But the difference is between that and like large scale property or what we call productive fucking property. You know, if I have an apartment and I decide to paint it one color versus another, like that's within my personal freedom because no one's affected by that decision but me. I'm the only one who has to live in here, you know. But if I own an oil refinery or if I own the telecommunications cables in your region that bring the Internet to you, you know, if I own a fifth of the farmland in your country, which happens with some families in parts of the world like Latin America, where you just own a giant part of the farms, like you come to realize like the power that that brings to you, like that's how in the market you get threats to negative freedom. Like you can absolutely coerce people if you control the energy supply or the communications aspects of an economy. You might not have the complete control of a Stalin figure, you can have a lot, uh, quite a bit, especially if you work with your buddies and you make a trade association and you work in a political party and get things that you all want so you can all get your thing. Because you're going to be organized. You keep your workers from organizing because that's bad. But when you're organized, that's useful. That's how private marketplace power gets exercised in the world and why we socialists are always going on about capitalism and so on. Just to draw that distinction, no one wants your personal disgusting toothbrush. That's personal property. It's not productive property. They're both yeah, private they're under capitalism, but only one gives you power. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>